Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with another recap of Tyler Perry's Sisters, Season 5, Episode 6, Keep It 100. So, it starts off with, you know, Andy, Fatima, and, 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 and not Emma, yeah, Angela, Fatima, Madam, and Andy. So, Andy officially gets to meet one of Fatima's friends, Angela. And her cousin, Madam, Madam, yeah. So, you know, she, Fatima pours them up drinks and decides to move to the couch. And they sit down trying to know, talk and whatever the case may be. So, <laughs> Madam is just giving off these looks like, okay, so what's the real reason why I'm here? Well, Fatima was like, well, I really wanted you to meet Zach. But Zach had to step out for a few minutes. So, Madam was kind of like, mm, yeah, okay. So then, you know, Fatima told her, like, listen, um, here my friend Andy. She was hoping that you could help out with her little situation she got. And Angela told her, like, listen, you know her favorites are kind of expensive, and Fatima was like, I know I told her that. <laughs> so, eventually, Madam was like, so, what do you want? Like, why am I here? Like, what you called me over here, all the way over here for? Like, what's up? So, you can see that Andy's face that she was scared, hesitant, perplexed. Like, she's all around shook. Like, if I say the wrong thing, what's going to happen to me? So, eventually... Andy tells her, like, listen, I have this friend that was involved in this, this bank robbery. And she was like, Madam was like, oh, snap. So she's a really nice. She was like, you talking about Sabrina Hollins? She was like, yeah, but well, how do you know? Listen, she said, I don't know where I'm going to without doing my research. So she was like, hold up. I'll be right back. So she went and got her phone, was talking. She came back with like two seconds flat. And she was like, and Madam gave her this paper. She was like, you can call her and you could probably, you know, see if you can see her tomorrow. With her. So Andy, she steps to the side. No, she takes the paper and she was like, thank you. Um, I'm really happy. I appreciate whatever. So Madam was like, so what do, What kind of lawyer are you? She was like a divorce attorney. She's like, man, I can't do nothing with this. But in her defense, Andy said, I do have some criminal lawyer friends. So she was like, I'm going to hold you to that. So, you know, that's how, that's how she going to pay her favor back. Like, listen, okay. Oh, well, I got a mark on my face. So, after that, um, Andy keeps getting this phone call. No, before that, I'm not, I'm not going to jump ahead. I'm trying to play it out how the episode played out. So, after that, it goes to Robin. He's still working in the office and knocks on the door is Paris and he asked for his trash so he took his trash it was like I'm good um I could come back and clean the rest like he was like no nah, I'm good I'm about to leave out of here soon so Robin asked Paris he was like you Paris he was like yeah janitor he was like um do you know Andy and he's in and, and Paris is like Barnes and Paris was like oh yeah I know her I know her from here so, Robin was asking him questions like, did you ever t go on a date with her? He was like, no. Have you ever took her out of here? No. And you can see Robin's facial expressions changed like, okay. So, Paris ended up dumping his trash, going back to the trash can, and he leaves. So, now Robin is sitting there thinking like, what well, day? I know he's probably thinking like, so why would somebody send me this message saying that she was messing around with Paris, but Paris is telling me a different story. Hmm. Yeah, they might have did the do, but that don't mean, you know, that was his girl or whatever. And I'm surprised he didn't tell her, tell Robin that they went to the, a gay club together. Like, that's not really a date. My bad, it's kind of cold in here. <laughs> but that's not really a date. That's just like a little hangout that ended up turning into a makeout section sec session afterwards because t they were drunk. But, you know, I digress. I don't know. We're going to see what 
falls into place next week's episode, I guess. So after that, you know, he's a little taken aback. So after Andy calls to speak to the judge and um tells she gets a phone call from Robin and it just keeps ringing and ringing and Fatima was like, "Listen, he keeps calling, so you eventually need to go ahead and answer and see what that's about." He's like, "It seems serious because you know, I guess Andy was just going to let it go." So Andy eventually she takes the call and she goes outside. And come to find out, Madam, she likes Andy. Just off of that little inter interaction that she's seen with her, like, she like her. That's so cool. Like, I actually like in the vibe of Madam, Fatima, Andy, and Angela. Even though it was a quick little, you know, sesh, I actually like that they two, them four would actually be great to hang out with. Because it's like, you got two gangsters <laughs> and two regular people. So, that would make a great dynamic of friends. Cool and cordial. Like, you got two that don't play about their money. And they they friends and family. And then you got two that likes to have fun. You know, just be chill. Like, I can actually see that being a budding relationship. But anyways, let's get back to it. So, Madam wanted to know more about Zach. And Fatima was not trying to hear it. So eventually, Fatima told her about Zach and how he went to go see Karen because his mother, her, her mother wanted to sit down and, you know, squash what they had going on out of the question. And she also um, revealed to Madam that she was also invited. And Madam was like, so why you didn't go? She was like, because uh, 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 she, 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 she wasn't feeling it and she didn't feel like she had to go. But then again, Madam did make a great point. Like, listen, why wouldn't you go? That way you can shut it down. That way it won't be no problem. So eventually, Madam convinced Fatima that, like, she should, you know, you know, take Madam up on the offer and go visit. Well, Miss Lisa up on the offer and visit and see they can put this to bay because anybody got time for the back and forth. He said, she said, your feelings, your, my feelings, like nip it in the bud. Like let it be known that you, his woman and there's nothing else coming from that. Okay. Just nip it in the bud. So before, um, after that, Andy leaves and they hear this music start playing. And Madam was like, yeah, and then Fatima, you know, she got her ad to, she was like, yeah, that's Zach's tenant that he rented to. And she, I have told her this numerous times. At first, Fatima was just like, huh, huh. And Madam was like, like, kind of like, why are you still sitting there? You should have got up and said something. So eventually, Fatima was like, yeah, you know what? Let's go over there and pay her a visit. So they do go over there to Deja's house. So Madam is standing right between where the two, standing in front of this pillar where both the doors um, or adjacent from each other, whatever. Standing in the pillar in the middle between both the doors. And, not Zach. Fatima and Angela walk all the way over to Deja's door. They knock on it, and the music is still blasting. I'm surprised she can hear the door, but whatever. She opens the door, and Deja just start talking all this, that, this smack. And Fatima was like, listen, I done told you already. And then, then Deja was like, listen... I let you, <laughs> this is so stupid. She was like, I let you slam my hand in that locker. I, and I didn't press charges on you. And so they just still running on her mouth. Mind you, she does not know that Madam is standing right behind her. And she's talking, talking, talking. You just see Angela and Fatim just like, okay. Next thing you know, Madam is tapping her on her shoulder. They just still talking smack. She's like, listen, hold on. I'm still talking. She tapped her again. Deja turned her neck. was like, she was about to crap her pants. Like, that's how shook she looked like. If looks was to kill, <laughs> she was going to die today. <laughs> like, for real, for real. Two, one thing about Madam, she do not play about her money. And she do not play about her family. If y'all watch all the Queensmen, y'all will know she do not play about her Money and her family. So now that I'm thinking about, we we about to do a crossover moment. I wonder if wait, they're cousins, right? 
So that means. So how is. Mm -hmm. So that means Fatima and Amp, they're cousins too. Because that's her nephew. So maybe. Dang, do, 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 I'm not I'm thinking if I do, Madam have another sibling because it only says she has a sister, right? But if their grandmother supposedly raised them, how is, I know this is so out of, out of the question, but how is her sister, I don't, you know, that's, that's, that's a whole nother story to get to. Listen, we're not about to dissect this right about now, but yeah, so Madam set Deja straight. She was like, listen, if I ever have to come over here again, it's going to be a problem. Trust me. I won't be here, but I will send somebody for you. And if Fatima tells me you've been trying to get with her man, we've been playing this music too lot, any type of thing go on, just know you will get dealt with. And that's just what it is. She was so stay. She was so shook and scared. Like she didn't even get to finish saying all her thoughts. She was like, "Listen, I apologize. I'm sorry for the way I did things like that." And she turned that music down with a quickness. <laughs> it was like, "Y'all have a good day. Y'all have an even better." One. I was like, "Oh snap!" Finally, somebody put some fire on her behind because she thought it was all funny games. And she, what she really thought was, Zach was coming over there when she knocked when they knocked on the door. And she was in for a rude awakening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Trima trying to warn you. And look, you about to be double warned. She's not playing no games with you. She's not. But let's get back into it. Come to find out, Q broke back into Maurice's house. Like, what was the point of putting the locks on? You know, once against the always against the he's a jack 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 of all trades. Like, he done got him. Basically. Q don't use everything that Maurice said to him against Calvin. So Calvin really didn't have nothing else to say. He just took his stuff, went to his room. And I kind of feel bad because that's not like Maurice, that was kind of foul on his part. Like, why are you telling all of Calvin's business to somebody you barely even know? Like that whole situation with Q, that was just messed up. Like it shouldn't even went down that far. Like they wouldn't even be in the situation they did. And but you know what? Hard lessons are, gotta, are are to be taught the long way when people don't follow the rules. And they don't take people's advice. Like, he should have took Sabrina's advice from the get-go when he tried to steal Calvin's checks. You should have been called the police on him. Like, you let that slide, that right there should have been a red flag. Like, come on now. That was a... um. Something for failure, a reason for failure, whatever the case may be. But yeah. So after that, um, Danny, she goes on her date with Jonah. And, you know, they're having drinks or whatever the case may be. Eventually, they head back to he basically wanted to screw her. So basically they get to um Andy's I mean Danny's house. By that time, they're talking, and he wanted some more to drink. She gives him the drink. And, you know, they started, you know, kissing, whatever. I guess when she got to his, his midsection, she would poke it around like, I don't know if he's small or what, but she's poking around. Obviously, it wasn't much there. So she's like, yeah, it has to be because he's small. Um, poking around, he's like, well, listen, how about I show you better than I can tell you? Yeah, he's small. And he was easily getting aroused just that fast by her just poking him like, what in the world? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she was a little bit turned off by that. She was like, listen, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And Andy, she did make it back home. I'm surprised she didn't go see Robert. He was trying to talk to her or whatever. But she was not having it. So she went home, checking her messages. She get a voice message from Paris. And Paris explained to her, like, listen, um, I met Robin. He tried to talk to me about me knowing you and stuff like that. And she was like, so what happened? He explained to her what happened. And then she was like, all right, you have a good night. Um, she calls Danny. And was like, listen, I was able to get in contact. 
and see Sabrina tomorrow. And Danny was like, listen, I want to come. And Andy was like, listen, you cannot come. Only legal representation can come. He's like, listen. Andy was, I mean, Danny was like, listen, tell him I'm your boss or whatever the case may be. She was like, all right, you could come. So that was that. Once she heard the guy in the background, she was like, mm, yeah, Danny was like, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. So let's get back to Miss Karen, the boys, and Miss Lisa. So Karen and them, they all have dinner, whatever. So it got to the point when it was time for her to read the letters. And her mother was like, go ahead. You can do whatever one you want to read to first. Because at first, um, Zach was getting annoyed. He really didn't want to go there. He was like, what's the whole reason behind it? But whatever, he decided to go. So he was like, listen. He kept looking at his phone, whatever. He was like, I think Ms. Lisa was like, so what, you texting her, see if she could come? And Karen was like, see, an hour of a time is too much for you. He he really didn't want to be there. Like, he was just, you know, doing it out of respect for Miss Lisa. Like, had it been you saying it, he would have been like, whatever the case may be. But, you know, he's there, you know, trying to see what she got to say. So, eventually, he came around, even though he's mad. Karen started reading her letters. Come to find out when you look at it, Zach had three pages of letters of, of, well, of the letter. And Aaron had two. So, she starts doing... Aaron first, she starts reading again, telling him, like, listen, um, all the good qualities of him and how at first she didn't like him. Because y'all remember back in, I think it was season two, where they was in the supermarket and she told him off. And they went their separate ways. But then later on, after they went shopping, she, he sat in her car and they ate ice cream and they talked and stuff like that. That right there, yeah, all that whole situation with the ex-wife. And then her brother and stuff like that, like, too, that's too much. Like, yeah, I can honestly see why she was doing the stuff she was doing. I think she was doing that because she felt like, I don't know. I really don't know because she kind of really pushed Zach away in her own sense. And then she just so happened to meet Aaron and see Zach was still trying to get his life together and also trying to still be there for her. But she basically pushed him to the side. She kicked him out again. And she was trying to pursue Aaron. So if in the beginning you was feeling that way, why you just didn't tell him that in the beginning? You basically let him on and to believe everything you said was valid. But in the end, you was confused, but you just couldn't say that. So anyway, she's reading the letter and she's telling him, like, listen... I love all the qualities of you. I like how you treated me. But I love you. But I'm not in love with you. And she basically said, you are the person that I really wanted. But it's still to be Zach. So Aaron started shedding a tear. And he was like, listen, I really understand where you're coming from. Because henceforth, that's how he met her. Like... His wife was doing the same thing she was doing. Only thing different is that Karen and Zach wasn't married. They were just on and off girlfriend and boyfriend. So after that, uh, they decided to take a break. Uh, Zach calls Fatima and lets her know that, listen, we've been here an hour or whatever. And about 20 minutes or so, I'm, if there's nothing goes further than that, we'll, I'm leaving. So, eventually, Karen and her mom come back out of the room, and they sit down. Aaron's still trying to talk to Zach. Zach is not hearing it. He do not like the old boy for nothing. Because the way, like I said, we going backtrack to season two, when they was meeting outside, when he pulled up with his bike to talk to um Karen, she was outside with Aaron, and instead of, like, telling her, like, listen, he's just trying to talk to whatever, he basically let her say whatever he said to him. And it's just like, well, dang. Yeah. So after that, it's a knock on the door, right? Because we're now at the end. It's a knock on the door. Guess who finally shows up? Miss Fatima. And there you have it. Ooh, 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 ooh. This episode was almost perfect. I really wish there wasn't as many commercials as it was. Because then they would have got to the more juicier points than necessary. But here we here they go again. Dragging the episode. Dragging it. 
get to the good parts already. I want to see Sabrina and Maurice out. I want to see Zach and Fatima back on good terms without having to worry about Karen's drama. I want to know, hurry up and get this DNA test so we can figure out who the daddy is. So that all this stuff can be nipped in the bud. Like, come on now. Robin and Andy need to get back on good graces because the way he came at her, sis wasn't for it. I really want to see more of Madam in season five. And I want to see more of Angela. I really want to see something done to Hayden because he's really blowing minds. Like, why are you just can't let bygones be bygones? You don't even know these people like that. And you really coming for them. Like, you got Zach and Fatima. Now you got Andy in the mix. It's like, it's just too much. Gary need to let Andy go. Like, she don't want you. She don't told you numerous times. That she had a last, a uh, last of of mental judgment, where she couldn't think or, or see clearly about how you really are. Now that she got it, some clarity, you still won't let her go. Like it's a lot that I want to see happen so so bad, and we only need six episodes in. But yeah, it's a lot. I can't wait to see next week's episode. Can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. I know I've seen in the clip where it says that, I guess, Karen got upset and she wanted them to leave. I'm thinking Zach and Fatima to leave. Because I think he, when she finally read her letters to Zach, Zach was just, like, here for her. I wonder if Fatima told Karen about herself, like, how you call her a B, and she put in her place, like... It is so much I can't wait to see for next week. Hopefully they play more of the episode and less of the commercials because right now these last two episodes was not it. Y'all literally dragged it out. For what? We're gonna watch regardless, but come on now. Get to the juicy parts. But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this recap of episode six. Keep it one hundred. And I'll see y'all in next week's episode, okay? With that being said, bye.